the simplest model that can account for metallic bonding is called the electron C model. In this model, a metal piece is held by mutual attraction of the metal cation for the sea of electrons. Cations are regularly stacked but are not rigid. The valence electrons are mobile and they localized among all the atoms. This model can readily explain why metals are ductile and malleable and usually does not crack or shatter. Mobile electrons carry current and disperse heat more quickly. Metals have moderate to high melting points and have very high boiling points. The properties of solids can also be explained by molecular orbital bond theory. Here, orbitals in the atoms of solids combine to form a continuum or band of molecular orbitals. If we have one sodium atom, it has one valence electron occupying the 3s orbital. Two sodium atoms can have this arrangement the two 3s orbital and combine to form two molecular orbitals. Three sodium atoms can have this arrangement and eight sodium atoms can have this one. Assuming a certain large number of sodium atoms present in a sample, there will be an extremely large number of the localized molecular orbitals with energies so closely spaced that they form a continuum or band of molecular orbitals. This is the band produced by 3s orbitals. This band produced by 3s orbitals is called the valence band and it fills only half of the continuum of molecular orbitals. If we consider the remaining 3t orbitals, we can extend the unfilled band where there will be an overlap with the 3s orbital. This unfilled part of the band is called the conduction band. In metals, electrons jump from the valence band to the conduction band if they receive even an infinitesimally small quantity of energy because no energy gap is present between the two bonds. This is how we could separate, in theory, conductors, insulators, and semiconductors. They differ by the size of the energy gaps between the valence and conduction bonds. In semiconductors, the energy gap is small that electrons can jump quite easily from the valence band to the conduction band. For insulators, the energy gap is large that electrons cannot bridge the gap between the valence band and the conduction band. Semiconductors are important materials of industry. Intrinsic semiconductors are pure four materials, such as pure silicon and pure germanium. Heat or light excites valence electrons of semiconductors to cross the band gap. Conductivity increases with temperature. Positively charged holes form in the valence band, such as this one. Once electrons are excited to the conduction band, positively charged holes form in the valence band. The electrons 
and the holes move in an electric field. In metals, heating reduces conductivity due to ionic vibrations scattering the electrons. Semiconductor compounds are also used. These compounds can have two types of atoms or even three types of atoms. A small amount of dopants enhance conductivity. Within the silicon crystal, for example, addition of a group 5A element, those with extra valence electron compared to silicon, for example phosphorus, produce an n-type semiconductor. n means a negative charge carrier. If you introduce phosphorus, it has an extra electron compared to silicon, and this electron can readily jump to the conduction band. In another case, group 3A elements, those with less than one valence electron compared to silicon, for example boron, introduce holes to produce a P-type semiconductor. P means positive charge carriers. Because boron has one less valence electron, holes become readily available as charge carriers. Joining the P and N-type semiconductors form the P-N junction wherein free electrons and holes combine. P-N junctions are used in diodes and transistors. Cooling certain metals near absolute zero allows it to conduct electricity with unrestricted flow caused by vibrating atoms. To conduct electricity without energy loss is called superconductivity. Certain ionic oxides, such as this one, superconduct near and well above the boiling point of nitrogen. In this picture, persistent electric current flows on the surface of the superconductor. This current effectively forms an electromagnet that repels this rare earth magnet. <laughs>